there are four major principles of uh, uh, ophthalmic surgery. One is that when you mm, operate on the eye, you don't want to move the eye. Uh, the second is that when you insert and remove instruments, you want to minimally distort the wound because if you do, the viscoelastic comes out. Uh, the chamber collapses and you're not stable. Uh, three, you want to be able to uh, operate 360 degrees uh, and not just temporally. So you have to hold instruments and be thinking about how can I insert and remove instruments in a controlled manner 360 degrees. And four, you need to be uh, gentle and respectful for the tissue so you're not um, uh, destroying tissue unnecessarily. So you have to know the anatomy. The first instrument we're going to talk about is a, an angle instrument. We'll call it a, a chopper. Now, when we uh, manipulate with the chopper, we need to hold the instrument as a dart, not as a pencil. Okay? Pencils are held like this. Darts are held like this. So in order to uh, uh, manipulate and have the most flexibility and control, we need to hold the instrument like a dart. So here we're going to illustrate going in through a side port incision. And remember, the side port incision, you can think of them as a tube. So if I want to put my instrument into this tube, I have to come in in the direction of the tube. I can't come in this way, right? If I go in here, I'm not going to enter the interior chamber as well as if I came in in the direction of the tube. So when I come with the instrument for all corneal incisions, uh, I'm going to be coming in in the plane of the, uh, of the incision. I'm going to go in first and then I'm going to be turned vertically. I'm going to be here now with, the, with uh, holding the instrument with three fingers like a dart so that I can manipulate uh, 360 degrees and especially sub-incisional. When you're doing sub-incisional, you have to be able to pivot on the wound and you have to manipulate the instrument uh, 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 this way so that you're pivoting on the wound. Again, I'm not moving the eye. If I want to go from here to here, I don't do it this way. I rotate the instrument. So I want to be able to do it in all different directions and I want to be able to use both hands. So again, I'm going to come in distally here. I'm going to turn vertically. Again, holding the instrument like a dart. I can manipulate 360 degrees, and then sub-incisionally, I, uh, I, I can manipulate here. Again, coming out in the plane of the wound. Again, coming in here, sideways, going vertical. I'm holding the instrument so I'm not moving the eye. I can manipulate sub-incisionally, as well as distally, just moving my So if I, if, I, if I held it like a pencil, and I wanted to manipulate, I'd have to make this motion. And this, plus, I'm usually going to move the eye all around, holding the instrument like this. And it's obviously much more difficult to rotate in the same direction and the same amount holding the instrument this way versus holding it here. This is a lot uh, more efficient. OK? That's number one. Let's Number two is a, is a, uh, a, a cannulated instrument, either saline or uh, viscoelastic. Uh, remember again uh, that there's a, a non-dominant hand, that's a fixational hand, and then the functional hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to use my right hand to uh, manipulate the, 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 uh, uh, the syringe uh, and my left hand to, uh, to fixate. So if I was going to be doing a uh, hydrodissection, I would come in again the plane, the wound is made in the cornea like this. So I need to come in in the plane of the wound. I am not going to come in, you know, this way. Uh, because if I come in here, I can, once I get in the wound, I won't be able to get to the other side of where I want to inject. So this is the wrong way to enter the eye. You need to enter the eye in the plane of the wound. Now, I usually hold the, uh, the syringe um, in this way so I can manipulate the angle of the, uh, of the tip. So if I'm coming in here for hydrodissection, I can come in in the plane of the wound and all I need to do here is rotate it a very small amount and now I'm underneath the capsule and I can inject here, I can come back, inject here. Sometimes I come out, rotate the instrument 
180 degrees, go in again in the plane of the wound, gently rotate so I'm at an angle, inject, come over here and inject. So that's my hydro dissection in the plane of the wound using my left hand's fixation, right hand functionally. If we were to do, to be using viscoelastic, the principles are the same. Uh, I want to be entering the eye in the plane of the wound, right? I'm not going to come in here. Uh, and I'm going to use my left hand to prone, uh, uh, pronating here. Uh, and as I, so I'm going to be coming in, I want to go into the opposite end of the, of the uh, anterior chamber. I'm going to use my left hand. Sometimes I can angle it a little bit this way. Go all the way to the end, inject my viscoelastic, and slowly come out in this position. I'm not lifting up. I'm not moving the eye. The eye doesn't move. I'm coming out in the plane of the wound. Um, so that's instrument number two. Instrument number three is a cystotome. The cystotome, uh, again, is used just like all the other instruments. We're holding it like a dart. We're not holding it like a pencil. Uh, and the reason for that is that we want to be able to uh, not move the eye and we want to pivot on the wound. So the other principle is that you want, wherever you want to hold the instrument while you're in the eye, you want to start with that hand position. You don't want to hold the instrument in a certain way first, and then when you come up vertically, you have to readjust. You want to start with the way you want to hold it. So I'm going to hold it like this. So when I go uh, into the wound, I'm going to go in the plane of the wound. I'm going to come vertically, and I'm going to do start my capsular rectus here and just move. I'm going to move uh, a certain way halfway to the iris, and I'm going to pull back, and I can extend the uh, the rectus. So. I'm, I'm moving, I'm not moving on either side, I'm trying to stay in the middle of the wound. Uh, that's very important. Oftentimes when you try to uh, move the, the tip of the needle on the capsule from this position to that position, people move it in this direction. So they go from here to here to, uh, uh, to extend the rexus when it sh should be, I think, rotating the instrument without moving the eye and then I'm going to come out through the plane of the wound inferiorly. The principle is very similar uh, with the Ogawa or Utrata forceps. Again, I want to hold the instrument uh, uh, in this position. Uh, I actually also, I move my whole chair over to the left because it makes it easier to make a 360 degree uh, uh, wound because my wrist doesn't bend this way. So again, I'll move from here I'll move the chair a little bit to the left. Now I'm going to come in in the plane of the wound. I'm not changing the position of my hand in the plane of the wound. I'm going to come vertically uh, and I'm going to grab my rexus here and rotate this 360 degrees. A lot easier with my chair position uh, uh, moved a little bit to the left. Remember that when you use this instrument, this is the, the, the plane of the incision is here, so I want to open and close the instrument in the plane of the incision. If I go into the eye and I grab the capsule in this direction and I open the rexus here, I'm going to open the wound, viscoelastic will come out, chamber will collapse, and I'm going to have to ask for more viscoelastic. So that's why you don't grab the tissue, if possible. Uh, and open the, uh, uh, the instrument in that way. You want to open the instrument in the plane of the wound. When you come out, coming out here. Uh, the principle is the same for uh, I and A. So you have an angled instrument, uh, and, and, and you want to be able to hold uh, uh, the instrument so that you can, you can rotate uh, uh, the instrument for the I and A here you can get it under the capsule and rotate it over here. So you have to have a way of rotating the instrument at least 180 degrees you know, uh, while you're in the eye. So you're in here and you're rotating your capsule here, you're here, and you're on the other side. So you're holding the instrument like a dart. If you held it like this, the, 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 the way that you would have to do it, you'd have to turn your wrist all the way down here to grab uh, an aspirate here and you actually would be almost unable to go to the other side without changing the position of your wrist. Uh, so that's why we hold it this way, because you can see it's much easier. I can go easily 180 degrees away. Uh, the final principle uh, is the principle of uh, the, the, the needle uh, 
uh, and how, where you hold the needle. So all needles have a, uh, I'm going to use this Allen wrench as, a, as an example, all needles have a, uh, uh, the, the, the suture comes in and it sways on the end of the needle and there's a round area of the, of the needle here. Uh, so this is the area that you do not want to grab with your uh, tying, with your needle holder because if you grabbed it here, the needle would be able to rotate easily. Uh, away from this round area of the needle, the, the needle becomes square. Uh, and so if you're grabbing it with a smooth surface needle holder and you grab a square uh, part of the needle, then this needle will not torque within the needle uh, uh, holder. Uh, I hope that's been helpful. Uh, the four so principles like uh, of a good surgeon are uh, don't move the eye, uh, we don't want to distort the wound with instruments entering and exiting the wound, we want to be able to operate 360 degrees and we want to minimally uh, damage tissue. Thank you.